The Faith and Fire with Megan Fortner podcast aims to light a fire that not only sheds light on who you are, what you have, and what you can do because you choose Christ, but also spreads as a contagious spirit of faith that has to be caught. We want you to live the life God has for you and for you to receive all that awaits you. Megan's goal is to use Facebook Live conversations and testimony each week to teach you to grow in faith, hope, love, and authority while stoking your fire to fight the fight of faith. Welcome to the Faith and Fire podcast with Megan Fortner. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sister? Blessed and highly favored. How are y'all? Amen. We're good. We have a full house this morning. We have Brother Josh, Haley. You know her, (laughs) don't you? Hallelujah. How are (laughs) y'all? And Roger in there. I mean, it's just a full house, and we're excited to have you on with us um, and just hear what the Lord has been speaking to you and and just see what the Holy Spirit leads us into. We've we've had a morning filled with um, just some good revelation um, on different things, and we do have some Bible questions, too. Uh, if you want to get into those with us. Um, so it's just, it's up to you this morning, Megan. We're letting you just take the lead here. <laughs> oh, well, praise God. It's an honor. And I'm I'm willing to do whatever y'all need, you know, like it's an honor. Whatever God goes, whatever y'all feel in your heart, let's flow with it. Amen. 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 Well, what, what have you been into lately? What, what have you been studying? What's the Lord been speaking to you? Um, just where have you been at in this season? Praise God. Well, I had a feeling you were going to ask me that this morning. I don't know why, but um, I've been deep diving into Psalms. I've been deep diving so much into Psalms because when you deep dive into Psalms, you see other scriptures in the New Testament. Like God has just been having me study certain words in Psalms, certain, you know, verses in Psalms. And then he's been showing me scriptures in the New Testament that line up with the things that have been said in the Old Testament. Amen. So it's been good. Any any particular psalms? Well, um, so yesterday I was in Psalm 27, which is my favorite chapter, one of my favorite chapters. And then uh, yes, a little bit yesterday and today I was uh, studying Psalm 34. It's been, it's been good. I mean, just the faith fight that we've had to go through for years, you know, uh, God has just been, he knows how to take you to the word to strengthen you yes. in that fight, you know? Amen. And so even though the fight may be done, you still don't lose sight of the scriptures that God sent you to to fight that fight because we got to be armored up all the time. We got to mm-hmm. be prepared all the time. And so um, when everything's still good, I'm still ready for the fight. Amen. <laughs> right. Amen. Right. <laughs> the praise of God. So, yeah, oh, yeah, I believe the Lord's looking for who's going to praise him when the answers aren't coming. Oop. Yep. Yeah. Who's going to praise him in the valley? Who's going to praise him in the sick times, in the hard times? And and I think that is really what shows our the fruit that's in us. That's what proves the substance. We talked about earlier the um, the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. These are the times that prove the oil in our life and that produce more oil in our life is when we praise, when we exalt, when we look to him, when we're going through these things. So okay, that's why we can count it all joy. It all wraps back around. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this Psalms 34, I see here, it reminds me of what we read in Daniel yesterday, actually. It says in verse uh, in Psalm 34, verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. That word magnify the Lord with, um, actually in Daniel, we were talking about how the Antichrist spirit and the, the person in the, the chapter of Daniel, chapter 8, Antiochus, who was operating in the Antichrist spirit, um, he basically, it said that he would was going to rise up and magnify himself mm. in his own part. He was going to magnify himself. And, and we see here that this is just the opposite, that the people of God, we're not magnifying ourself in our own heart. We're magnifying the Lord. Um, and, and and so we should be opposite of that Antichrist spirit. And that's how we know when the Antichrist spirit is operating is anything opposite of the word. <laughs> it's literally, right. And I think we make it 
uh, we make it more difficult sometimes, but uh, anything anti-Christ, anything opposite than the truth and what the word is telling us to do. So I just, I love that, that we, we're going to magnify the Lord together and exalt his name. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Well, something the Lord gave me yesterday when, when you're talking about magnify, he reminded me of a magnifying glass. And how a ant is so small until you get that magnifying guy, you know, and look at it and it's huge. So he said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to go to my word. It may be small, but when you study it, I'm going to magnify it for you to where it's huge and it overcomes and it grows in you to where that magnifying and meat or whoever's reading the word and really gets the word, eating the word, feeding on the word is then going to magnify it for others to see. You're not just going to read the word and know the word. You are the word, you know? Mm-hmm. So whatever he showed me that yesterday that's what i just love about deep diving you know you can go and you can read the scriptures and be like i did my chapter today let's go you know conquer the world you know and that's great but whenever you really feed on and you dive into like he took me to other scriptures that line up with these scriptures i didn't even have to ask him that's just what he was doing in me but like he said when you when i take you to the word i'm going to magnify it to you you're going to see it in a whole different light. A whole, you're going to see all the really tiny hairs that you see on an ant. You know, the things that are unseen, right? The Bible right. says greater is the unseen. And um, one thing that he told me for 24 is we're going to be seeing in a whole different level. We're going to mm-hmm. see things in a whole different way. So that's what he's doing. He's just showing me in the word things and magnifying them to me. So like to go on the way of magnifying the word. Wow. I was just sitting there blown away. I couldn't even finish that whole chapter because I was like, that right there is enough. Like my brain is blown right now. <laughs> I've been there a lot with Daniel, you know, cause we've been in Daniel with the broadcast, but also just the gospels. Like I've been in Matthew and just these parables that like, he just, he magnifies them. He does when we let the Holy spirit reveal things to us. Like he just magnifies it in a whole new light. I, I love on. that. I love that. What you're talking about. <clears throat> With the magnifying glass. Well, with a magnifying glass, what do you use it for? You use it to search. So whenever we search, yeah. he's going to let it be magnified before us. So it's all about continuously searching and seeking. And he will reveal when you when you seek. He says, seek and you'll find. So, Amen. So that, that encouragement to any <laughs> listener out there who is struggling when you're getting your word. Look, I've been there before. I'm pretty sure all of us have probably yeah, been yes, that's frustrated true. getting in our word before. Frustrated going to prayer. You know, somebody was talking to me yesterday, just a sweet um, person in the Lord, a uh, child of God, but they were talking to me about how they were struggling with prayer and intimate time with the Lord because they they didn't want to be too repetitive. They didn't want to be too shallow. That they wanted to give the Lord the best of what they had and in their time of communion with the Lord. And they said that they've been struggling with it because they just, they feel like they aren't a good prayer warrior mm-hmm. and oh. they're not, they're not this, they're not that. And I'm like, but the Lord already knows what you're thinking before you even say it. The Lord already knows what you need before you even ask. So he's wanting you to just be with him. Like I was just trying to encourage that the Lord the Lord sees us and it doesn't have to be a certain way. We don't have to pray the same way that somebody else does. Right. Cause honestly, the time of prayer is cause this person actually, what they said was, well, for some reason when I pray, I, I go blank, but when I read the word, it's alive to me and, and I'm getting fed and, and I, it brings me so much peace to get my word. And honestly, I think the word and prayer can be the same. Yes. Prayer is communion. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. So I believe when we're in our word, that can be our time of prayer as we're in the word. Would you all agree with that? Mm-hmm. Because I was trying to encourage this this um, person in Christ. And I was like, you know, that sounds like to me when you're in your word, you're hearing from the Lord and that's communion with him, yeah. you know? And even even declaring and reading that word out loud yes. to the Lord would be prayer. Yes. It, when we're reading and reminding him of what he spoke, what he has spoken, and we're, we're holding on to that. So um, I do think that these are things we don't always talk about in the body of Christ because we're afraid that, oh, no, that sister might not think the same of me if I tell him that I'm struggling with this or I'm confused about this. When half the time it's just the enemy lying to us, because I feel like to this person, it really is the enemy just trying to confuse them mm-hmm. and make them feel less than because they're in their word and they're receiving from their word. They're just 
they feel like their prayer life isn't good enough. Yeah. If that makes sense. Well, see, well, if you don't mind, let me hit on that for a second. Yeah. You just said that. Um, when we come up into God, up under God, and we come to Him, everything that we have need of is there. So mm -hmm. whenever we go in there and we, we have those thoughts of, Maybe I'm not praying right or I'm not asking right. Listen, God knows your heart. He knows what you're doing. He knows you're trying. If we'll just go up into his presence and just speak to him, the things that you once thought are going to go away. He's going to grow you in prayer. He's going to show you how to pray when you get in there and you just start praying the way that you are and let the thoughts, let the emotions, let all that go and just get into his presence. It's just like him cutting off the things that we don't need anymore. He's going to show you how to pray. Mm -hmm. Stop, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, stop looking at this person praying and all that. Yeah, they're a powerful prayer warrior and we want to learn from them. But God has an assignment for us in prayer all the time. And our prayer assignment may not be exactly the same as the other person's prayer assignment. So when we get in under the presence of God, he's going to teach you how to pray. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you in his work. This is what I have for you to pray. This is what I want you to do. But it takes us getting out of this thought. And just allowing him to work in us because our thoughts can stop us from a lot of receiving a lot of things that he wants to show us. So I just want to encourage people today, if you're having that where you're like, I just don't think I'm very good at prayer listening to me. You're good at it. Get in there. <laughs> let God show you. Just start talking to him and let him. He'll show you scriptures like, listen, this is this is how we're going to do it. I'll show you. I'll grow you if you allow me. One other thing is. You know, the Bible says we have to be obedient and willing. Well, it's willing and obedient. But I want to touch on the willing. We have to be willing. We can be obedient and not be willing. That's just the same as in prayer. Well, sometimes they go to prayer like, oh, I got to pray today. No, when we are willing to get into prayer and learn how to pray, God's going to fulfill that need. He's going to fulfill that thing in your heart. We must be willing, not only obedient, but also willing. But God is going to show you. Just let him do it. Wow. Amen. Yeah, you know, that as you're talking about willing and not like just an obligation, that word willing almost in right now is making me think of almost um, hungry, like hungry and um, looking forward to it. Like, like, mm -hmm. like I don't, I, I'm not getting language for this, but, but it's like the Lord is showing me like almost just looking anticipating it anticipating yeah. it that's the word i think i'm looking for like all throughout your day that being the thing you're looking forward to um being in prayer and that's what i see with willing because you know if we're willing to do something then that means like we our will our free will that we have we're choosing that because yeah. we value it because yeah. we we want more of god we desire more of him than we do all this other stuff we don't have to do and and I mean that steps on my toes like that that steps on toes it does because yeah it's like we have to think about what we're thinking about that's one of the best things someone has ever told me and with prayer is to think about what you're thinking about wow. <laughs> yeah well to be mindful of what you're thinking the way you're thinking because where the mind goes the man follows mm -hmm. where the mind goes the hands follow the flesh so we have, that's why he tells us to take on the mind of Christ, because when we get his mindset, when we get his heart, which a lot of times is referenced, the heart and the mind are connected, the same thing. We are going to go where he wants us to go. Hallelujah. I don't know. I just feel like he connected yeah. those dots for me right there. But, oh, uh, yeah. but that's so encouraging. I'm so glad that, that you, you said that, Megan, because willing we got to be willing mm -hmm. yeah. it can't just be but, an obligation right and and we're set apart not all of us we're none of us are the same right and you know what i mean so it's like you got to learn with god god's going to show you and you can like i like sitting underneath leader's shape you know there are people that i like to sit underneath their shape learn from and god's going to show you that but you also got to be wanting to learn on your own too and going to him i always That's tell right. people go to god first and then then if you need some help you know, or whatever, I'm here for you, but I want you to hear from the Lord first. And I say, I'm not trying to irritate you. And I'm not trying to say that what you're saying or asking is not important, but I want you to learn to go to him first because he's the first, he's the yes. first, not a person, him, he's first. And so I also have to explain sometimes, listen, you're set apart. Your race isn't my race. You're set apart. So how God's going to teach you how to pray is going to be different than how he's going to teach me how to pray. Right. You know, so you're set apart. You're different. Don't try to, I always say, don't try to 
you know, put yourself in somebody else's shoes or don't try to measure up to somebody else like that's what I, you know, whatever. I'm not as good as her. No, you're going to be better than me. Go on. Get up under the presence of God. I'm mm-hmm. hearing you on. I want you to be better than me. I want you to go further than me. Listen, you know, that's mm-hmm. just that's how believers are. You know, mm-hmm. you got to love and cheer people on and just guide them to God in the word. That's the biggest thing. Guide them to him because ultimately that's who we need to hear from. That's right. right. Amen. Amen. Uh, Miss Gail texted in and said, God is strong in our weakness. Corinthians chapter 12, 9 through 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Mm-hmm. That verse has always like, I feel like that's my theme verse or something. Because <laughs> like, I'm like, Lord, I'm really weak. So you're really just shining strong right now. Man. Um, you really humble me a lot. Um, <laughs> but But honestly, he reminds me of that because, you know, I tend to um, try to do things in my own strength and I'm Mm -hmm. still learning to really just let go. I'm learning to just walk and, and, and let him work it out. And it's so freeing Mm -hmm. because all of the things that I used to let like worry me or stress me out. I mean, you could just see the stress all over me when I would be, it was just bad, just stress, stress, stress. But it's like when we can just, confess those things to him and when we really just cast our cares i mean it's amazing it's amazing just the way our body feels oh yeah um the way our mind feels and we're able to focus more on him and the people around us and and i'm still learning i'm not there yet but i'm running my race i'm on the path i'm I'm not going back and i'm i'm gonna keep getting up um but i'm just thankful for that so i agree with that miss thank you for that verse miss gail and I, I I just love what you're saying, Megan, about, you know, encouraging people, encouraging people um, to say, like, you know, don't go to me first. That's a big one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big one in the body of Christ, because we I mean, I don't know about you all, but a lot of times I want to go to yeah. a person I'm close yeah. to. Right. I mean, even like our spouse, you know, we're supposed to put the Lord before our spouse, but we want to go to our spouse if we're, you know, when we're married, like we should want to go to them. But we should want to go to the Lord first. Yeah. Even toward them. Good point. Even for our mom. That's a big one. Parents, you know. Right. A lot of times it's like, it's natural to the flesh to want to go to a parent. But, you know, the Lord, he's our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's the first one we should go to. That's so much wisdom there, Miss Megan. Well, I always say, if I'm silent when you answer me, don't think that I'm trying to be rude. I want you to go to the Lord. Right. And I, I mean, I just I just put that out there plain as day. Like if I'm silent for a couple of days and you haven't heard anything from me, it's because I want you to go to the Lord. Right. Like, you know, that's just. And so people, you know, people get it. They get it. And and what I love is, is how God works so great. You know, he's so great. And if we will just believe the word and be the word and do what the word says. Our, like you said, it's so freeing. You know, our thoughts are fickle. We're supposed to take our thoughts captive and line it up with the Word of God. So if we let them thoughts just run around in our head all the time and don't do what the Word says, are you going to receive what the Word says for that thing that's happening? You know what I mean? So it's like, for me, when that stuff starts happening, because trust me, in about four and a half years, I could have let my thoughts just take root in my heart and then have bitterness and all kinds of things, you know. But if we do what the Word says, it works. Yes. And then you can walk through life happy and joyful and helping others and encouraging others whenever you're going through something that could crush somebody, you know. But that's how God works. That's how he, he tells us to stand on the rock, you know, being planted, rooted, grounded in the rock of, mm-hmm. word, of the word and Jesus. And it's like, whew, what other what other way of life do you want to live? Because the other ways don't work and that's it just causes right. all these problems. You know right. what I mean? Like the word works. Work like I just am gonna say this again. The word works, and He Amen. loves you, and He wants you to have the life that He has for you. If you walk it out, talk it out, be it. Whoo, come on, Does that's that right. You? Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Whoo, just walk it out. Walk Amen. It out. Talk it out. Say the word. When the sudden comes against you, it comes in your thoughts, just like this thing with the prayer thing. Like I don't think I'm good about. It. No, you remind the devil. 
that God is in me. He lives in me. He lead, guides me, directs me. I can do this because he is in me. I can't do it in my own strength, but I can do it in the strength of the Lord. That's and right. I'm going to allow him to do this for me. And I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen and I'm just going to let it flow out of my life like river, living water. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, once you experience that, there's no other way. You want nothing else. Don't allow victim mentalities to get in you because, woo, that's a whole other thing. You be the victorious person that God has already hey. set you up on yeah. to be and just allow him to do his, have his way in you. I always say, Lord, have your way. Before I do anything like this, I'm like, Lord, your thoughts, not my thoughts. Your words, not my words. None of me, but all of you. If Come he on, shows up because of the willingness and the obedience and the love in my heart that I have for him, because I would be nothing without him. I'd be nothing. That's right. Amen. It's all about it's all about our heart posture. <laughs> yeah. That is so true. And you know, you know that song, um, more of you and less of me. Mm-hmm. You know, with you just saying all of you and none of me, that I, that's what I've started to sing with that song. So there was one day in church we were singing it. I actually started singing it behind the mic, like mm-hmm. all of you and none of me. Cause I'm like, I don't want less of me i want none of me for it that's good and so i just started singing that because sometimes we need to change the words to worship songs like sometimes the lord is like you know what that season's over with the less of you season is over and now it's none of you season (laughs) yeah (laughs) amen Amen. and and i just love that but you know as you were talking i thought of isaiah chapter 40 um you were talking about just how he he gets the glory when he does something in us He gives us that power that would normally not make sense. We walk through a fire without being burned that everybody else is being burned because we have him. And it just, you know, reminds me of Isaiah 40, um, that he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He he increases their strength. He increases their strength. And um, I just, I love it. I love it, Megan. Is there anything else? I mean, we have five minutes, so we have to wrap up this morning. It's been so good. It's flew by just having fun. Um, do, do any of you all have anything else you want to say to listeners this morning? It's been very encouraging. Brother Josh, I feel like you have something. I've been wanting to kind of cut in here and say something. I feel like you have something that you need to share. Well, I don't know about needing to share, but when you talk about the word works, I was like, I was thinking, yeah, it's almost like the Lord spoke to me a few years ago. The word will work if you work the word. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So many people, they get caught up in saying, yeah, the word's going to work for me. But there's still something that we must do. I don't know. I mean, it's just an encouraging word this morning, Sister Megan. I, I love the Spirit of God that's in this place right now. And just to um, just to feel the presence of the Lord is amazing. And, you know, and I ain't got to wait for a specific day, but it's a daily walk that we must do. And I'm thankful for people like you, Sister Megan, and also Sister Hannah and Kaylee as well that's in here today that are working the word because we do yeah. know and we proclaim that the word works amen yeah. Yeah. and i mean i think it's so humbling too megan how you know so many people is not to the point of where you are to where you say yeah i just need you to go meditate upon what the lord has for you you know so many people <laughs> want to just say what this say this say that and you know i got to be saying something but no they need to be learning something because yeah. see and i think when you said that as well that was very, you know, that showed me you as a leader in this time for women and other people. That's how you lead. You lead by them understanding that even though I'm leading you, there's still things that you must do, too. Now go go do what he's called you to do. So. Oh, the, Lord, the, Lord, the Lord. Oh, man. Okay, Lord. I feel like, and this is kind of a hard thing to drop before we end the broadcast, but <laughs> I just feel like through what you are speaking right now that he's showing He's speaking to me that this is the reason why so many leaders are burnt out, right? Because they're not redirecting people to the Lord. They're trying to be the Lord for them. Wow. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So, yeah. And that's something to remember. And the Lord reminds us this for our own good, for the good of the person that needs to go seek, seek him and for the good of the leader that's leading them because he doesn't want the leader to get burnt out and dragged down. And he doesn't want the sheep to to be not being fed what they need to be fed from the source so this this is really good this morning and i I think we need to all remember this that it's okay to set those boundaries it's okay to say you know what 
I don't have anything for you right now, but God does. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to keep cheering you on, but you and the yeah. Lord need to spend some time together. Like that's a, that's an awesome boundary. Like that is a biblical boundary that we can <laughs> set with people. So Mom. I just I like that. that. I love that. I, I needed that this morning. So, um, Praise God. Well, we love you, Megan. Um, oh. Any last words before we have like two minutes before we get off of here? Yeah, I'll take a couple of seconds. So all I want to say is I love you and God loves you. Everyone listening today, God loves you so much. Right. And all he wants you to do is come in, come in. Anything that you have need of is in the presence of God. And so I'm just saying he's at this call now. Y'all need to come in. It's time to come in. It's time to eat. It's time to grow. It's time to learn. Let me take the things off that you don't need. Let me do it. Don't be mad about the correction. Love the correction. Take heed of the correction. But come in. He's asking us to come in. Because the more we come in, the more we look like him. The more we can get through the things that this life tries to throw at us. You know, the more that I just want you to know, if anything, if you take anything today, he loves you so much much and all he's asking is for you to come in and give your time to him so he can work in you you can't do it on your own you can't keep trying it isn't gonna work if you keep trying you gotta come in and let him do it in you through you and for you you just do your part with him and that's really all i want to say i love y'all love you i love you so much thank you yeah i love you guys thanks for joining us for the faith and fire podcast with megan fortner We look forward to having you again next week on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Each episode comes from a live conversation Megan will have with folks that have a story to tell pointing to the faith and fire that only comes from Jesus. Share it with your friends and we'll see you next time on Faith and Fire with Megan Fortner.